We just had another crazy week in AI development. Musk released Grok3, Google released the AI co-scientist. We hear that OpenAI's GPT-5 is probably coming up soon, and Microsoft has found that AI makes us stupid. I have a summary. On February 18th, Elon Musk's AI venture XAI unleashed its latest model, Grok3. Musk himself built it as scary smart. In, in fact, it, it, at times I think Grok3 is kind of scary smart. And you're like, wow, this thing's smart. One of the first Grok queries that Musk shared was the request to come up with three new ideas for the nature of gravity and the unification of the forces. Grok suggested, for example, that gravity might not be a force in the traditional sense, but a macroscopic shadow of quantum entanglement across higher dimensional structures. And that Musk must have found that to sound reasonable tells you a lot about the status of the foundations of physics. But to be fair, Grok 3 turned out to be impressive indeed. It quickly outperformed all or most other AIs on a number of benchmarks, whether in mathematics, scientific reasoning or coding, Grok excels. In the crowdsourced evaluation platform Ella Marina, Grok 3 set a new record. In this figure, you can see how quickly Grok caught up to the other models and also how much OpenAI's starting advantage has diminished. I tried Grok 3 myself. By way of reasoning, I found it to be comparable to GPT-4 and DeepSeek. A major disadvantage, though, is that you can't use both the think and the deep search mode at the same time. On the other hand, it has a big advantage over OpenAI and DeepSeek, which is that it searches X Twitter. Though, when I asked it to find Elon Musk's tweet about the quantum gravity Grok query, it didn't find it. Grok 3, by the way, is the first general purpose AI model to exceed 10 to the 25 flop in training compute. This means it breaches the rather arbitrary threshold of the EU AI Act and will require additional safety tests to remain available in the EU. But America innovates faster than Europe can regulate because the law will only go into effect in August this year. And if Europe still exists by then, maybe we can agree that we've had enough safety testing already. Then, just a day after the Grok announcement, Google introduced an AI super agent, specifically designed to help scientists discover research hypotheses and topics for potential grant proposals. They call it a co-scientist, which is also what I'd call the new hire coming to replace you. The co-scientist is a super agent that supervises six not-so-super agents which have different roles. Like one will come up with ideas, one will criticize them, one will modify them, one will rate them and so on. The AI co-scientist is not yet publicly available, but Google had a few scientists try it out. One of the results has been amazing, maybe even a little scary. This came from a group which researches how bacteria evolve antimicrobial resistance. The AI co-scientist came up with a new hypothesis, which was subject of an unpublished research project of the same group, and the results confirmed the hypothesis. That is, the AI agents drew the same conclusions from the published literature as the scientists did, but did it in a few minutes rather than months. According to new scientists, the lead author said, we were shocked. I sent an email to Google saying, you have access to my computer, is that right? Because otherwise, I can't believe what I'm reading here. So on the one hand, we have this amazingly rapid progress that isn't likely to stop anytime soon. And this has a lot of people excited. This progress will likely continue for a while. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, announced on February 12th that they plan to soon release GPT 4.5 swiftly followed by GPT-5 within a matter of weeks slash months. On the other hand, even the more advanced large language models continue to have the same basic problems as the early ones. Grok, like all other large language models, 
often fails to pay attention to the exact wording of queries. In this example, it confuses 20 feathers with 20 pounds of feathers. Guess it wasn't meant to fly. It also seems to be easy to jailbreak and happily gives out bomb instructions. OpenAI's deep research tool turned out to be very good at completely inventing data tables. GPT-40 and Gemini Advanced continue to hallucinate. According to a recent study, they all invent references in the financial literature with a probability in the double digits. So, you know, if you want bad financial advice, just stick with YouTube. And while a lot of companies have adopted some sort of AI system, the results have not been earth shattering. In the memorable words of Edward Achtner, who does the AI integration for HSBC, much of the AI talk is a success a theater. Candidly, there's a lot of success theater out there, and we have to be very clinical in terms of what we choose to do and where we choose to do it. And Brian Chesky, the CEO of Airbnb, said about their AI adoption, I don't think it's flowing to a fundamental step change in productivity yet. Microsoft, meanwhile, found that AI is making us stupid, at least some of us. They tracked about 300 people in different AI tasks, such as generating content or asking for advice. They found that people fall into two camps. Those with high confidence in AI use less critical thinking, while those with higher self-confidence use more critical thinking. Then again, the idea that new technology makes us stupid is hardly new. Radio, TV, video games, the internet, Google, all supposedly made us stupid. Maybe they did. Artificial intelligence is really everywhere these days. If you want to learn more about how neural networks and large language models work, I recommend you check out the courses on Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to know more about large language models or algebra, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.